how to use Google Calendar full tutorial. Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing you guys how you can get started with Google Calendar. So let's get into it. Now to get started with Calendar, let's get into our browser and just search for Calendar. You will see the first search results will be Google Calendar and you are just going to click on that. Now, if you want to access it directly, you can go into the shortcut section and usually you can find the shortcut for your calendar over here and this will open up your Google Calendar. Now, keep in mind that the Google account that you are using to use Google Chrome will be the default account that will be used. Now, from here, you can get started with the infinite possibilities on Google Calendar. So to get started, what are the key differences between just, you know, having Google Calendar versus using Google Calendar? Well, Google Calendar actually has a lot of different things you can do, such as set notes, tasks, reminders, schedules, and so much more. So to get started, let's go on ahead and open any particular day. Now, on any day at any particular time, you can add an event. An event could be an appointment, a meeting, or anything that you have to attend. So if I go on to today, and let's say I want to go into a monthly view, and I want to go into March, and I have some events I want to, you know, attend. So I can click on the date over here, and then let's say I have an event at 1 p.m. I can click on over here and add a particular event. So this might be my family lunch and now from here you can see the date and time the date will be the date that you selected and the time that you selected now you can also choose a particular duration let's say this lunch is going to be for three hours and now this will actually increase the size of the label below that you have the options to set a repetitive task add guests so any other family members you might want to tag. This is more helpful in working situations where you might have a meeting you have to attend with some of your coworkers. So you can add those people as guests. And if it is a video conference, you can add your Google Meet video over here as well. Below that, you can add a location. So let's say this is going to be at a certain place. So let's say this is at one particular place like this. Below that, you can add a description or attachment. So if this is for a meeting, you can add a meeting notes or anything that will be discussed in the meeting. Let's say this is going to be planning for our next trip to the Atlantic, like this. Now below that, you can add an attachment. This might be a file from your Google Drive, or you can upload another file as well. Below that, you have your calendar that will be displayed and then the color you want to use i want to use a flamingo pink color and then you have the option of what should your google status be during this time busy or free i want to keep it at busy and you have your default visibility and then a reminder so i want to be reminded one hour before the wedding and then i might want to add another notification where i am reminded 15 minutes before the particular event once you do that, you can click on more options to further see the task in detail. Then click on save on the top to save a particular event. Now, this is just an event that you might already be adding in Google Calendar. What happens if you want to add a task? Well, you actually can add tasks into Google Calendar as well. So to do that, click on create on the top left and choose task over here. Now you can do tasks in the form of individual tasks or I like to do one other thing before I create task, and that is to click on the right section over here of your Google Calendar. You have a designated tasks section. Everything you create as a task instantaneously will be added to your default list of my tasks. Then you can click on the title list, and then you can click on create new list to build a segregated list for segregated tasks. So for example, if I want to add a my tasks list where I have my day to day tasks and then I have a pending things I eventually have to do. So maybe this is just like a really long list of things I want to do, I have to do, but they're not urgent. They're not something that need to be in my forefront. They're something that are in my periphery. So in my my task section, let's say the first task I want is to have a daily stretch and exercise 
like this. Now, this is a task I want daily, so how can I schedule this task? Well, click on the task and click on date and time. Then you're going to click on repeat, and then this will repeat every day. I can set a specific time, let's say 8 a.m. every day. I want to stretch and exercise. You can also choose a ending time. So let's say I want to work out for one month or two months. So after two months, I don't need this particular reminder. And then after that, I'm going to click on OK. Now, if I go into my monthly schedule, by the default, so by the default, I will have this task be integrated into my entire calendar. So if I go into the current date over here, and I have this task over here, if I drag and drop this task at a different time, it will be inserted into a different time as well. Now I want to save it into all tasks and I'll click on OK. And just like that, this task can now be displayed. And if I go, I have this task displayed at 7.45 a.m. every day. I have my daily stretch and exercise. Now, let's say I also want to add my birthday. So I can click on birthdays over here and this will display any birthdays that are linked to my Google account. You can also add them in the form of a event or task. Now, one very underrated feature is note keeping on Google Calendar. So you guys can see on the top right, you have a keep icon. And if you click on that, you can actually just take notes of things you're supposed to do. Now, one thing to note is that these things are not convertible into events or tasks. So you will have to manually create a new task, but it's still a good list to keep. Now, you can also create your appointment scheduling on Google Calendar. Now, for free, you can only create one particular type of appointment scheduler, so you can only set up one schedule, but still, it's a great and powerful tool to use. So let's say that after my nine to five, I have a five to nine job, and that might be online consulting. So I can click on create on the top left, and then click on appointment schedule. Now, let's say the title for this is going to be Let's say this is Visa Consulting, and I have the appointment duration, let's say it's one hour each, then it is going to be repeating weekly. Let's say I'm unavailable on Sundays, and I'm available from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m., and I might want to duplicate this to all of my times. Now, this has been duplicated by copying over here. You can also add another period. So if you take any breaks in between, let's say between 7 to 9, I work. And then after 9, let's say from 11 to 12, I do a second shift. So I can add that as well. But I'm going to duplicate 7 to 9 as our default timing. And I'm going to reduce the appointment duration to 45 minutes. Below that, you have a scheduling window. So if you are available now, if you want to set a start and end date, then the maximum time in advance that you can be booked or appointed for. So let's say I only want a appointment for the next 30 days, or let's say for the next 20 days, even 30 is a bit prolonged. So only people that, you know, if someone is trying to book a appointment, they can only book ahead in the next 20 days. They can't book me after the next 20 days because that can be a bit difficult for you to manage. Then the minimum amount of time that a person has to uh, book a appointment. So I don't want to be booked five hours before, or let's say I want to be booked Someone can even book me one hour before they get started, before they want the appointment. Then you have the adjusted availability. So indicate times on specific dates when you're available. Now, you might be unavailable due to an event at a certain date. You can set those over here. Below that, you have a buffer time. So I like to add a at least a 10 or 5 minute buffer time. And then you can limit your number of bookings per day as well. Once you do that, you also have your calendars. So you can check your calendars for availability. And by default, what Google will do is that if you schedule an event for the same day as the appointment time, this would automatically block out those appointments. And now you can click on over here. Then you have your description, your booking form, payments and collection, and more. And just like that, you can set up your bookings as well. And people can now go on ahead and book you or schedule meetings with you as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe.